I've got a lot of requests to show you the interior of the, of the uh, chicken coop, so I'm going to do that in a, an upcoming video. But I just went and bought feed in the nearest town. There's not many feed mills up here, so I don't have a big choice of where I can go to get cheaper. And I know if I go south, feed is cheaper. But even down there, it's expensive compared to what it used to be, that's for sure. And definitely compared to what I, I hear from my American <laughs> friends. Yeah, at least trying to get in. 38 bucks for 25 kilograms of 50, what, two pounds? 55 pounds. 55 pounds? 25, 2.2, 55 pounds of scratch. Organic scratch, which is just greens. Gra scratch is just basically what they call what you throw on the ground so the chickens can scratch it up and eat it. So it's missing a few things like minerals that you would buy in the pellets. But anyway, I did buy organic pellets as well, or mash organic mash, layer mash, which would be 16% protein minimum so that they can lay eggs, produce eggs and lay eggs. But uh, 30, 46 bucks, $46 Canadian for one bag, 25 kilogram, 55 pound bag of feed. That is absolutely insane. And that is the reason that I'm actually raising chickens again. And I don't know if I mentioned, I think I mentioned in a couple of videos that i um, probably going to add livestock. <laughs> we bought some meat and not many people that we know would or could do this in one shot, but we don't like to, we have bought lots of um, grain fed, grain finished beef over the years. Uh, full steers as well as half steers. The last, oh, we got one even like three years ago actually, half a steer. To supplement the game meat that I harvest, um, but we remember what two years ago, three years ago now that I bought two full steers off my sister. They were a small Dexter cattle, so I think they were 350 pounds, 350 pounds hanging weight, 380 or something like that, average between the two. So not tons of meat, but anyway, they were. She finished them on her grass. So she had improved her acreage significantly with regenerative agriculture basically so the rotation heavy rotation of um, chickens uh, sheep and cattle throughout the property I'm trying to think what else she had pigs but they had their own big pen in the forest anyway the grass got incredible after about 10 years so that beef was finished as well as like as fatty as a green fed beef anyway as you know well, maybe you don't know, but I don't really call myself a homesteader because I don't really have like a farm like most what people would call homesteaders on YouTube now. I've always been more of a wilderness living guy and have lived mainly on um, hunted, trapped a little bit, but hunting and fishing mainly for the majority of our game. Last year I got a moose, three deer for the family, on family tags as well as my own, um, a bear, two turkeys and a bunch of small game I think if that's it I think so we are basically out my wife and I are eating mainly carnivore essentially with the uh, with fruit so a Paul Saladino type diet I would say and that's been the secret to my weight loss and muscle gain and um, health improvement and so on as well as the supplements that I was taking in the beginning, but um, not now. I'm just handing all those to my, or giving all those to my family members who aren't eating this way. Anyway, my point is that because we're eating so much meat, we're going through and protein, we're going through so many eggs and so much meat, red meat, that it actually is economically feasible to put all the infrastructure in with a payback period that will be in our lifetime instead of just our kids' lifetime. So in the past, it didn't make sense. So. You could buy a bee for a couple thousand bucks. We bought a bison last week. That's the reason I'm telling you this. We went and picked up a bison. It was about uh, 1,100 pounds, I think. Uh, live weight, maybe 1,000 pounds live weight. It was 620 dressed, 620 hanging. And we always get everything. So we basically get, like, let's say we got 600 pounds of, of meat, bones, organs, and uh, fat. But typically you would like a, a retail customer would have that deboned and, and uh, defatted, like trimmed, 
and would end up with about 360 to 390, 390 pounds of meat. Um, so let's say we got that much lean meat. 40, no, it ended up costing more than that. I think it was $5,200, including butchering, which was over 500 bucks for the butchering, packaging, uh, cut and wrap. I'm, I can't even believe it. I'm so out of touch and I make decent money, as you probably know, and I've, even though I was extremely in, in extreme debt for my business failure, I recovered from that and ended up, we're completely out of debt, I have no debt. We own everything that we have. And uh, I would never buy anything with credit again. So we kind of have been building up um, from the cabin all the way up to the two homesteads that I have now that I've built with my wife. But um, we're in a very fortunate position, at least now, it's probably temporary, like it has been for the rest of my life up and down and everything that's going on, who knows. My point being that we're very fortunate to be in the position we're in right now where we can go and spend $5,000 plus on one animal to fill the freezer. So anyway, it makes me really understand, really appreciate what people are going through, but also because the rest of my family is in the same position, including my daughters, are not um, doing well financially. But it makes sense for me to set this up. I have this sort of windfall in this job, making decent, making good money, and affording to spend time and energy and money on something like this, which is not practical for the average homesteader or person starting out, let's say. I'm 54, so of course I'm in a different position than I was in my early 20s when I built my first cabin. Um, so I'm putting in this infrastructure and hopefully my family continue to continues to benefit from it over the years, but it actually even makes sense. Like I could justify maybe even spending this money, at least in a lifetime, for or raising chickens for eggs. Because we're paying eight bucks a dozen for organic eggs from a friend, a local friend, um, who's just raising backyard chickens. And um, our sources of, and this, she can't supply enough for us either, or couldn't. So we're still getting some as these chickens mature. But we'll get off of that system as well. But the cost of feed is still barely justifying. I think it's going to work out though about two dollars a dozen, maybe two fifty a dozen, if I kept buying feed. But it, I guess this is where I was headed. It justifies me growing the food, the chicken feed. Valuable garden space, but because we're not eating vegetables, we're only eating fruit, meat, eggs, milk products. The uh, garden here, I'm just putting it to use to grow food that I can feed the chickens, convert it into a really high quality protein and fat source and, and eggs. And the excess uh, vegetables that I can grow that we're not eating, my family can eat or we can give it away or barter actually we do some trading for other products, milk products and so on. But um, again, it makes sense. So I did mention, I think I started saying this, I mentioned that it looks like we're going to get into livestock production again, livestock raising, which I haven't done in, it's been eight years or something, I don't even know, 2014 I think was 15 when we got rid of the cattle, I'm not even sure. Anyway, we had cattle on rented land, and we were breeding uh, purebred Dexter cattle, and then we had some heritage um, pigs as well, Berkshire, Berkshire were there, or Tamworth, it was a mix, can't remember, um, and then chickens as well, and quail, and a bunch of things. So we're getting back into that because the cost, like, like it would cost us 12,000 bucks is what I figured, to buy enough meat just to feed my wife and I, and then we have our two daughters that we... Uh, still help out as well. Um, so between the uh, meat that we can harvest from the wild, that won't get a moose every year either. Can't even get a tag usually. Um, but even the deer, it's not that great a deer area. So I'll get one per tag probably for the for the family. And I've got two tags again this year. Um, I already got a bear, and maybe I'll get uh, a bear on my wife's tag or with her. Maybe she'll get one this fall try to get a bigger one actually but we're gonna have to buy some meat or raise it so we're getting into raising food so keep an eye on the channel I don't even know if I should start another channel second channel under my wife's pro profile or something just to separate the content because it's so confusing for my audience to watch everything on the two channels and then patreon just jumping back and forth between my wilderness life and then my homestead life more domestic life so it is confusing I don't know I don't know what you think. Yeah, 
actually if you won't <laughs> tell me what you think about that should I start a completely separate channel and just keep the content separate or uh, just pare everything down to one channel or at least pare Sean James and my self-reliance down to, to one channel and then start another channel our self-reliance or something I don't know but our life has changed since uh, 2019 20 especially um, lives of us or my wife and I and our extended family has changed enough that I've evolved and changed along with it anyway put this chicken feet away and a few more uh, blueberries to plant that's never ending alright thanks for watching appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you back here on this homestead next time take care